Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Simon and I'm back with another episode of Battlestar Galactica. This is episode number 7 and I feel like we're getting fairly comfortable in this first season's pace, uh, you know, showing us where the season is going to go and certainly more recently how it's going to focus on the paranoia and suspicion uh, now that everyone knows that Cylons can mimic humans. And that leads to a lot of story potential because again, you've got so many different mindsets you know, so many people who could be suspected. Um, and, you know, there's also the consequences that come along with that. Um, last episode, we saw consequences of the chief, you know, <laughs> having a little fling. Zuko's just having a little bit of a mourning with me here. He's uh, he's being a little bit vocal, aren't you, buddy? Um, but yes, you know, obviously, because the chief's been having this kind of illicit relationship with Sharon uh, against regulations, and they've had to kind of hide you know, what they've been doing. I don't know if Sharon intentionally left the hatch open to the point where another agent was able to get through and, you know, blow part of the ship up. Um, but it certainly wouldn't surprise me. You know, the, the Sharon on the Galactica is an interesting one. Obviously, we know, we know Caprica Sharon is fully aware of who she is and what she's doing because we've seen her leading Carl to, you know, or at least trying to lead Carl to some kind of a, a trap, or they've got some kind of a plan. You know, they said that if he goes looking for Sharon, then the next step will be in place. If he goes north, they'd kill him. But the one on the Galactica doesn't seem to genuinely, like, genuinely doesn't seem to know that she's an agent. And um, I'm wondering if that's going to come back to, you know, bite the Cylons in the arse, you know, because it could well be that even if they're activated, even if they are made aware of their Cylon nature, the experiences they've had as a human might influence their next actions. And if that's the case, then, you know, there's a lot of potential here that the Cylon agents could turn against their uh, their masters, as you might call them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of potential. And, you know, again, I think the next few episodes will continue to focus on that suspicion, the revelation that's just come out, um, whether we'll see any more kind of uh, intrapersonal conflicts between... You know, the, the master at arms, the commander, the chief, you know, everyone involved. Because that was, it was like an inquisition in the last episode. And uh, you tend to find that people get a little bit power drunk in those scenarios. And likable people become arrogant, egotistical, and uh, very direct, which isn't always comfortable. So yeah, we're going to jump in. So let's watch the next episode of Battlestar Galactica. I'm sure I can find evidence of his divine hand in some of these delightful examples. Uh, I was say, not head of divine digits After before. All, there are so fracking men. But he is... I can be relied upon to find God in one of them. Taunting what her and... What is it that drives you to blasphemy, Gaius? Yeah, your God, my God, everyone's God. He's big enough for all of us, isn't he? Now please. Now please, let's get back to the sex. Can't we do something a little more? God demands that we procreate. It's important you form a personal relationship with God. Only you can give yourself over to his eternal love. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> I can't he doesn't want eternal love, he just I wants 20 minutes. Your immortal soul, no, what you are doing, darling, is boring me to death with your superstitious drivel. Which leads me to the inescapable conclusion that Cylons are in the final... Uh, he's gone on a bit of a rant there. That Cylons are, in the final analysis, little more than toasters. <laughs> great looking legs. He's getting it's bold. My fantasy. See if I care. Can she turn his fantasy into a nightmare? You may be. Is the question. The glass could open up, but not. Excuse <laughs> me? Thought, you wanted to see me, Commander. Miss Godfrey has brought some very disturbing accusations to my attention. I think you should have the chance to answer them in person. Hold up. Right, thank you. And um, hold up. Is she? Is she's actually there. Right there. Oh my God! Hello. I'm right here. New dynamic. <laughs> um, Doctor, this is Miss Godfrey. <clears throat> <laughs> Is, uh... One of you can see her. You can all see her. She's standing right next to me. <laughs> <you. laughs> 
Oh, what a power play. She has been there the whole time. No. Waiting for this moment. Slightly puzzled to make your acquaintance. Don't touch me, you traitor. Oh. Oh, she's putting... Oh, no. Let the silence into the defense mainframe. You betrayed your entire race. You're the man responsible for the Holocaust, and I'm here to see that you're exposed and sentenced to death as the traitor you really are. Oh, she's playing with him now. By squeezing something that looks like a red ligament with blue veins on the right side coming out of a sack. Oh, God. Fluid Who drew the short like straw for that dog. job? Oh, are that you was the chief. Me? This whole thing is a bunch of veins and ligaments and sacks of goo. Shut up. It's gonna hurt like hell, but it's supposed to. Thanks, Doc. No pain, no gain. No cliche left unturned as as Kareth Reyes returns to the world of the world. I'd be uh, will she do it or will she find I'd be around? quite concerned about the lack of I medical staff. I, I wonder if the doctor's I'm training more people. Where are you? Huh, here we go. Have reason to believe. Oh, is he gonna? Is he gonna reveal her? That she may be a <clears throat> oh, oh, it's all out Madam in the President? open. Madam President. Oh shit! Did she pass out? I was gonna say she was shaking. Let's get Doc Connell over here now. The president's collapsed. Madam President. Oh. There are times when I just. There is a very convincing game going on here. Times when I just That's... want so much to be held again. It will not work on the commander. You understand that, don't Attempting to romance every person you come into contact with is not going to work. There must be times when. Yeah. <laughs> Back away. No reaction. Do not, under any circumstances, allow Shelley Godfrey to leave this ship. Yeah, he's going to suspect it. Again, why are there gaps in the door? America! What is it with you and bathroom stalls that you can't just put a fully enclosed door on there? What is this coincidence? That's the last place you want to have a conversation. So, uh, when you're taking a dump. How are you doing? Uh, you're busy. Yes, I know. I don't want to distract you. Please don't let me interrupt you. I like how his feet are pointed inwards as a sign of nervousness. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. Thank you, Doctor. Again, you pointing the camera through those gaps is not making me feel any better about it. I get extreme anxiety at those kinds of things. <laughs> also, gender neutral bathrooms. You know, that is the future. Oh. oh. Yeah, that scene gives me anxiety on multiple levels. And that is... She's going to be there as well. That's going to be her. I hope. I really hope. What the hell? Oh, thank God. You think this is over? This is not over! You have not had the last! No more Mr. Nice Gaius! Mr. Nice Gaius. <laughs> wow. This whole scene has been a roller coaster. Can't treat it like a thing and expect to respond. I have to treat it like a pet. But at least that's my guess. She's being strange. Yeah, that's right, my guess. Yeah, the chief wanted me to kick your ass out of bed so you could help figure out that raider of yours, but. Clearly, you still need the rest. Um, take your time. 
No rush. This is a you challenge. I think that reverse psychology crap yeah. is going to work on me. I really don't care what you think, Lieutenant. All I know is that every day you spend in that bed is another day that I have my opinion of you confirmed. As you were. <laughs> As you were. <laughs> I'm willing to do anything. Anything at all. Only I need your help. I did not conspire with the Cylons. I'm an innocent man. Who it is kind of true. Court of public opinion he didn't uh, actively conspire with them. He unknowingly conspired with them. No fires reported anywhere on the ship, Commander. Exact location of the alarm. D-wing cargo where it intersects D-wing. That's a lab. Yeah, that's just going to make it look suspicious. Like someone walks in on him now. Oh, come on, you're such a genius, you don't know how to fucking old control the lease. I'm pretty sure you just pulled out the monitor. <laughs> you just made it more apparent. I mean, oh, seriously? Yeah, he's just, you're just making yourself look guilty. Oh, take it for a ride. Ride it. Treat it like a horse. Okay. <laughs> Just don't accidentally touch the guns. Think of it as a goat. Okay. Whatever. Come on, boy. <laughs> Get up. Come on. Come on. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. I don't want to step into what you two have. You feel the way you feel, and I, you know, I have to respect that. Well, there you go. Neither of you are going to be sleeping, so... There's that. Oh. Oh, okay. Who wrote that? Could it be herself? Oh, oh, that red thing's back. Someone said to me that they didn't do that again. Like the, the red spine thing. Well, there's your Cylon detector right there. Just make them orgasm and you'll find out who's a Cylon or not. And I acknowledge that you are the one true God. Somehow it doesn't feel right though, because this is all under duress. Like, if you have to force someone to believe because of the blackmail, is that really genuine? Is she going to reveal herself to be a Cylon? Set the record straight. Until the photo was fully resolved. This is all her plan from the beginning. Ran the security checks. She knew it would get to that point where once they had the image, that's when it would be revealed. So that was always her safe, like, like her failsafe. Never have anything to do with that attack. I mean, this woman existed. She didn't just vanish. Have them check again. Every ship. Every ship, including this one. <laughs> yep, there's her glasses. That's a sign. I get the feeling we'll see her again. She didn't just vanish. Clearly, the Cylons wanted to discredit Dr. Balto because of his. Boy, does she body. feel silly right now. Dr. Balto, it gives me great pleasure to exonerate you publicly and to recognize you once again among us as a scientist. A leader and a friend. Ha! Huh. Yeah. Like you two are gonna be friends again. Ugh. Oh god, that guy smiling really give me the creeps. You're a hero. <laughs> You're the more popular uh. than ever before. Well, that was certainly an episode. Um there were some scenes in there that I found 
intriguing, disturbing, entertaining, anxiety-inducing. It was... It had everything. And, you know, it was a complete kind of... Baltar experience. You know, it was... It was very well planned, is the first thing I'd say. You know, the idea that they've had this in the back pocket, you know, or specifically... Um, the blonde woman has had that in their back pocket, just whether it was intentional, whether it was there, just in case he doesn't seem to come around to the idea of her faith, um, is an interesting concept. You know, would she have done that even if he hadn't become so belligerent? Because, like, you think he would have learned from um, when he repented? Like, don't piss her off. Don't insult her, you know, beliefs. She is, for a Cylon, quite reasonable. You know, she clearly has an agenda, but she doesn't seem to want any harm to come to Gaius. And, you know, the only time that she's shown true anger is when he is dissed on her beliefs. And it's like, in this episode, he just went full fucking force. He, like, essentially called her an idiot for believing in a god. And, um, you know, whilst everyone can have their opinions on religion and faith and belief, you know, you don't want to insult anyone... For choosing to believe in something. Um, and he decided to do that in the most direct and arrogant way. And especially for someone who he should have realised had the power to uh, bring him down. And so that's about all of the events. And, and just in that scene in the CIC where she was actually there. I was like that's brilliant. She's she's had a copy all this time. Somewhere in that fleet. And she's been waiting for a moment. And I'm assuming that we're going to see... Um, Shelley Godfrey um, again you know those those glasses being left with the commander seem to be a little hint um, and you know I wonder now if the commander's also going to get some more interaction with her he didn't seem to be too moved or too phased by her uh, offerings you know when she came on to him in his uh, in his office and I'm not surprised, he's not the kind of person that would easily kind of submit to the ruinations of a good-looking woman, you know, without having a kind of sensible head on first. And, um, you know, it just made me wonder what would happen if he just didn't, I don't want to say convert, but, you know, if he didn't kind of become more open to faith, if he didn't have that kind of plea in those last moments like what would have happened would she have still done what she did because again I, I kind of like I guess it is a very kind of inhuman um, expectation that you know forcing someone to believe by putting them through an experience like that and it, what is essentially blackmail in a way uh, would be the same as someone just coming to believe something naturally you know it, it's it's not the same thing there's the, there's always going to be an issue because it didn't originate from a genuine place. It originated from a place of desperation. And, uh, you know, yes, he may keep up. He may toe the line out of fear of further repercussions. But the moment you make him realize that it was all part of a plan anyway, that's going to get, I would imagine that would instantly damage his belief because it's kind of like, well, if you'd planned this from the beginning, then, you know, maybe you just don't really want me to believe anyway. It's just kind of like you're using me. Which, you know, I've no doubt he feels anyway. But yeah, some of the scenes in this episode, it was like... The the toilet scene really just gave me a a bunch of anxiety. Not just because that's, that's like the nightmare scenario for someone to try and strike up a conversation when you're trying to do your business. But also, the doors... And, you know, I've been to America several times. I've been to those public restrooms where, you know, th there's no privacy. When you've got, like, a two-inch gap either side of the door, and you can clearly see out and see in... I, I never understood that, you know, I never understood why that was a thing, and uh, it just gives me so much anxiety there, and um, there was moments as well when, you know, he he was confronting her in the bathroom, and I was like, man, what if actually, whilst she, she might be a Cylon, what if she's kind of in this position of, like, not knowing she's a Cylon, you know, and she genuinely believes that She's got the evidence and all that. And, you know, that just complicates things further. And then there was suspicions that it was all in his head. It was like, well, if she can 
invade his fantasies? Can she turn those fantasies into a nightmare and put him into a a dreamlike world? But yeah. Um, so that's everything that was going on with with um, Doctor Baltar, which I really found entertaining, and you know I look forward to seeing where that goes. But again, it's kind of like all of these coincidences seem to be giving him credit, you know, from the guy who he just made an educated guess at being a Cylon shows back up to confirm their beliefs that he was a Cylon, saying that well, yeah, this this Cylon detector must be real. You know, you've also now doubled down on his um, his reputation. Because he's been accused and been acquitted of potential treason. So, you know, he is right now in a, uh, a really strong position. But there's there's some parallels going on here with, obviously, Kara and um, the President and their kind of medical journeys. You know, obviously different reasons. The President doesn't want anyone to know about her cancer because, well, firstly, that might inspire panic. Uh, if you know the President's terminally ill and also it would probably damage her re-election chances um although i would argue that the cancer is probably more of a danger to her re-election chances than anything else directly um and you know obviously both of them are averse to doing the right thing in terms of their medical treatment and so one's through i think pride um and the other is you know through kind of um, fear, um, but the end result is the same. They ignore the doctor's advice. They they do things contrary to what might be sensible. Speaking of the doctor as well, I do hope that he's training some more people in the medical field because uh, the way that he's smoking and you know his uh, advanced age, I don't think he's going to be around for the full journey. Um, and it, uh, from what I remember, he is the only doctor that they have. So yeah, they might want to consider a replacement, and begin that training now. But um, no, it was a fun fun episode. Um, again, Apollo was kind of taking a bit of a back step in the last couple of episodes. He wasn't in the last episode at all. In this episode, he was only in a couple of scenes. Um, you know, which I get it. You know, you can't have the full focus on every character in every episode. But uh, it just seemed like a sudden shift because he was quite prominent. And then he's taking a big back step. And I'm guessing he'll come back into it at some point. But uh, no, very good episode. Very entertaining. So yes, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, anyway, thank you all for watching and I will see you for the next one.